Hello and welcome to part one of Gentle Bend. Um, so what I'm introducing today is a new way to start a painting. And that's with uh, three mixtures of dark. So you see me go through this process of toning my whole canvas and uh, then eliminating parts where the light should be, making things darker where the dark should be. So. Uh, the mixture I used is transparent oxide red, ultra blue, and permanent rose. And you add those three together and you can get some really good dark darks. You just use transparent oxide red and you can get some good lights. lights. So um, I used a paper towel a lot today to eliminate stuff. And uh, brushes with clean gamsol on it to shape and carve out shapes. And uh, that was the process for today. So, if you're interested in a new way of starting a painting with uh, transparent oxide red, with some additives, you've come to the right place. All right, get outside and paint. It's starting to get spring here, even though it's February. We're getting some sunshine. And uh, paint with your friends. Get critiques, and don't be intimidated by a white canvas. All right, let's start painting. Hello and welcome. I'm George Call. Welcome to part one of a three-part series titled River Bend. Okay, so, uh, or Gentle Bend. I'll figure out one of these here. And um, so, as you can see, I already toned my canvas and I'm introducing a new process to my students this week in my studio class. And this is the preliminary um, start. This is how I do my mock-ups for them. And uh, you get to see how I create a painting in three sessions. So this tonal I put on here is a mixture of three um, products. One is Transparent Oxide Red by Rembrandt. And um, I think it's uh, 378. If you don't have that, I think... Um, Raw sienna might, or burnt sienna, I'm sorry, raw sienna might be close enough. I also mix that with a little transparent oxide red, or I'm sorry, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of, um, of uh, rose, um, permanent rose. So, as you can see down here is probably more blue in the mixture, blue and red with the transparent oxide red. This is more just transparent oxide red and uh, these darker sections here. So um, I'm just going to show you the mixture. You get a little bit of uh, transparent oxide red, a little bit of ultra blue, a little bit of transparent oxide red to the right so you can just use that, and then a little bit of permanent rose. That's all you need to do. And that is the mixture for particularly the darker areas. I also used a kind of a soft flared out brush uh, called a Shiraz number no. 6. It's a rosemary product. And no, they do not sponsor me. I just like them. Alright, so now we're ready to figure out where all these shapes are going to be. And uh, what I'm going to do is experiment with some things as to where I want my large, uh, lights and darks. So, see if I can go back to my Shiraz, my number six. I'm going to get some Gamsol in there and clean up my brush from the stuff that was in it and see if I can figure out where some lights are going to be. And just by using paper towel, you can see with the brush, I can also figure out where some lights are going to be. Just sometimes a little bit of Gamsol in there can loosen it up to so the paper towel can get some work out of it. I think there's a light down here. So 
reflection of some sort. Okay, so that is in there. Alright, so the paper towel stuff comes in pretty handy. And now I want to try to lighten up some of the area that's going to be trees or foliage. So I'm just kind of scrubbing it down a little bit. As you can see, paper towel again. Okay. And I don't think this needs to be quite as dark in here. I think another significantly important thing here is there's a bank here. There's some, some lights on it. And I might need to move the reflection down a little bit and then get some darks over in here. And some darks up in here and down here. Okay. Now you want it greasy, but not too greasy. What I mean by that is you don't want it where it's dripping down on your canvas. And you know you've had too much. So you want it a little bit loose, but not a whole lot loose. All right, what I want to do next is change to a little bit different brush. This is just a smaller, flat I don't know what brand it is. Some sort of Hobby Lobby thing that is here. It's just nice and stuff. There's some rocks here, the top of rocks that are getting some reflection right in here. And there's a light right in here too. I'm gonna secure my canvas. Maybe the better way to do that is like this. There we go. I'm kind of strip the threads in here. This whole thing has been working for me for a long time. I keep thinking I should get one of those more sophisticated ones that have all kinds of bells and whistles. But I've created so many good paintings here. It's like an old friend. And I'm, I don't want to get rid of her. Now there's some lights coming up in here. So this is kind of a fun new way to start a painting. And I just wanted to introduce it to my students and to you, my viewers. All right. Now, Let's start defining an edge here. And I think we're going to make the edge of our river, the river bend, kind of darker right in here. So I'm going to my darker pile. And there's some good darks right up in here. And another one right up in here somewhere. Not quite as dark, but dark nonetheless. And 
and some darks running through this area. It's a nice light right in above this dark right here and here. And I think I made him a little too pronounced. There's some lights right in here. All right, time to get back and let's look at this. Well, it kind of looks like an abstract shape at least. It's looking pretty good. I think this dark needs to go a little higher. A little higher. So let's make him higher. And he's going to go out this way a little bit too. And out. Okay. And there's kind of a dark right in here. That kind of comes this way a little bit. And I want to make sure this dark comes across. I added a little bit of ultra blue to the mixture. And I got a good dark. And he's going to be right in here. And here. And here. All right, now with the, I don't know if I have the right brush, it has enough edge on it, but I'm going to go start working some trunks. So I'm going ultra blue, transparent oxide red. And if you're running out of red, use some burnt sienna. A little bit of red and a touch of gamsol. I know there's some guys here. And here. And start doing these fellas. And put in more than you need because you'll probably eliminate a few of them. And I just put some random stuff coming in. And just looking at my reference as much as possible to really get some sense of where these landmarks are going to be, or shapes. In this case, these are tree trunks. And that starts to give you some sense of where things should be. And once you get in one shape, you need to get more shapes around it. All right. Let me get back in the water now with this little brush and get some lights in here. 
And here we go. Sometimes you have to dip your brush almost every time to get what you're looking for, to really remove the product underneath it. I use a, a clean and a mucked up two little trays of Gamsol. One when I clean my brush and the other one when I just want to try to really keep a pure clean brush. And that does the trick. And now you're getting some sense of shapes of my rocks. They kind of come down on one side. And then come up on another. And then there's some light guys out here. Now there's some lighter water right here. I think I can... No, I need some brush in here. So I'm going to lighten him with a combination of brush and transparent or uh, paper towel. Softening some edges here. Alright, I have got 14 minutes left. Okay. Okay, with that, I want to try to make sure I'm okay with my light in the right place. And that's what I'm doing right now. And if something's a little too wonky, I'll fade it out a little. And I need some lights right in here and here. Again, I'm really concentrating on looking at this reference. There's a deep blue pool right here. So I think I need a dark in there. And I've got some shadows coming across the water which look like this. I'm going to go blue, red, which is rose, blue, transparent oxide red, and I think we have some shadows that run this way. And some more that run in this area. Just big dark stone in here. I didn't see that till just now. You know, a lot of this stuff is just looking at what's out there. Blue, red, brown. And there's some undefined darks through here. And I might have to lower this dark a little bit. Blue, red, transparent oxide red, and And this guy's pretty dominant over in here. All right, how's that looking for you? All right, now 
let's start putting in some color. So for some of these, I think what we want to do is start using more, uh, you know, as I've been using the, the blue, rose, brown, maybe start incorporating some, some greens in here. And these would be the dark, the dark guys. So I'm kind of going from dark to light in this. All right, so let's make that mixture and take a sip of my coffee and uh, get started with the mixture. So let's see if we can use what we have and put everything together and add a little yellow ochre to it. I'll add a little blue, ultra. It's a very so dark green. I'm going to add some viridian. I really like this viridian that I call it rot gut. It's a student grade. It's uh, by Winton and it's called um, viridian. Just Winton uh, viridian U. So it's cheap. It's a great mixture. And we're getting some some color out of it. Probably didn't make enough, so let me get some more yellow ochre, some more viridian, and incorporate that. I know everybody wants to go to the lights, but I'm asking you to just hold off. See those bright, squeaky greens in there? Let's get some good foundation stuff in here. start putting some of these subtle greens in. Still using that soft brush. It looks like a like a number four size. And I'm using the side of it scrumbling it a little bit. Well quite a bit. Having the, where the uh, limbs are, I can kind of use it as a roadmap of where to go with this thing. And I see some deep, deep greens down in here. Viridian, blue, viridian, yellow ochre. Yellow ochre, a little bit of red to knock it down, green, more viridian I knocked out too much. There we go. Got those subtle greens in here. Love it. And I'll put some up in here too, because I think this is more of a reflection. Really good base color, this subtle dark green. All right, let's make some more Viridian, Ultra Blue, a little bit of Rose, Yellow Ochre, more Viridian, Yellow Ochre. Boy, this is really starting to get my imagination going. This is good. I used to start all my plein airs this way. And then in the process of teaching, I've got, a, got into more looking at shapes and, and value colors. This is kind of going back to my old roots. Getting these 
deep uh, reds in there to start with. I'm getting back, and yes, it's looking good. Okay. So now, I'm going to clean my brush. I'm going to move the green over. And look how much time I've got. Ooh, five minutes. This is good. So let's get into some subtle blue. So I'm going to go to cobalt, light gray. Oop, I put some royal in there. That's okay. I want a darker blue. I want to cobalt, cobalt. You can add some red if you want to get it a little deeper. That was just a little bit of alizarin. And I'm going to start putting that in some places. And here. And here. And here. What this does is kind of start, it gives you a little bit of a softer edges here. And uh, that's kind of nice. I'm going to add some white to this. Clean my brush. Uh, I should have cleaned my brush before I put that white in there. And uh, let's go to uh, Ultra Blue. White. A little bit of Gamsol. And should get more light in there. There's more white. Good. Good. I think we have some over here. And here. Kind of snakes over into this area and even over into here. And it's getting pretty weak. I've lost a lot of my product in the mixture. All right, let's change course here and see if we can get some uh, light tan in here on the bank. So let's get some transparent oxide red and a lot of white. So I've cleaned my brush, I hope, enough. Getting both sides mucked up and I'm going to put that right in here. And there's some in here. And a touch over in here. And let's get some limey green in the water here. So let's go a blue ultra. And um, Yellow ochre, and we have some slimy, greeny water. And I'm going to start putting that in here. Slimy, green water. Oh, I should have put some sky color in here in the reflection. <sighs> yeah, you can do that for your homework. I think it's even darker down here, so I'll add some more 
green and more yellow ochre to give the slime look down in here. Just got that idea from my reference. And some more slime here. And let's move over to the other side before that dinger dings on me. And I've got some darks heading out in this area. Blue, Viridian, Transferred Oxide Red, Viridian, Yellow Ochre. And let's Get him a little bit more colorful here. Oh darn you, Bill. Okay, that brings us to the end. That's my 30 minutes. I'll see you tomorrow in part two. We'll be adding more color and balancing this out a lot better. Thank you so much for coming for part one. All right. Hey, standing back looks pretty good. All right. Thanks again. Bye-bye.